If there's one thing that tourists hear about Prague, it's that beer is cheaper than water. And that's mostly true. When you live in Czech Republic, spend money here and earn money here, is it really that cheap? I made another video about what I spend in a week living in Prague, but in this video, I want to focus on some general differences between the money culture of the Czech Republic and the US, specifically Prague and Los Angeles. I can't possibly speak about how all Czechs deal with money or all Americans deal with money, but these are just my observations. Don't forget to subscribe and say hello in the comments below and tell me where you're from. First, exchange rates. As a Californian, you can drive for 3,000 miles without ever having to think about other currencies. Yes, the Czech Republic is in the European Union, but on the whole, it doesn't accept euros. That's why it's so confusing for American tourists who do the Prague, Budapest, Vienna circuit when they come to visit. The values of those currencies fluctuate every day. When you're on vacation, it doesn't really matter, but when you live in Czech Republic and you've brought savings that are in US dollars, it can matter a lot. If you have clients from other EU countries and they're paying you in their currency, or if you have student loans that you have to pay to an American company, but you're earning Czech crowns, the exchange rates can get complicated and you can waste a lot of money in fees. Technically, because the Czech Republic is a member of the EU, it is obliged to eventually adopt the euro. Just not anytime soon. After the euro crisis in the last uh, decade, 75% of Czechs are against adopting the euro as their currency. And they are very stubborn people. So it looks like we'll be converting between currencies indefinitely. Once we moved here and started earning crowns, we realized that nothing was as cheap as we thought. And we started complaining about the high price of things, just like true checks. So exchange rates are something I never thought about when I lived in the US, but now it's something that I am constantly keeping an eye on. Money reflects value. Well, obviously. But what I mean is that the person who's on a currency of a country often reflects the values of that country. It's been a normal practice for centuries to have the nation's monarch on its currency. In the United States, we proudly do not have a monarch, and so uh, several of our presidents and founding fathers adorn our bills. But Czech money not only features the first president of Czechoslovakia and the equivalent to our George Washington, but also a philosopher and teacher, an opera singer who also wrote poetry and prose, as well as an historian and a writer whose most famous work focused on the life of a bohemian village. Having their images on the currency reminds us every day that a nation derives its greatness from its artists and thinkers, not just from the people who sign treaties and declare wars. Getting paid. Another difference is that in the United States, you get paid on the 1st and the 15th of every month. In the Czech Republic, you only get paid once per month, so you better budget. In Los Angeles, one whole paycheck of mine went to pay for my rent, and the second paycheck of the month went to pay for my car payment, my car insurance, and my gasoline. And then there was nothing left. Oh, that's another difference. When you are offered a job in the Czech Republic, you are offered a monthly salary. So they would say, this job pays 30,000 crowns, which means per month. Whereas in the United States, you'd be offered a yearly salary. They'd say this job pays $45,000, and that means yearly. It's a small difference, but I actually prefer the way the checks do it because knowing my monthly income helps me budget for rent and all my other monthly expenses. VAT, or Value Added Tax. All EU nations have what's called VAT, or Value Added Tax, on all goods and services. The Czech standard VAT is 21%, with a lower rate VAT for foodstuffs, sporting events, uh, pharmaceuticals, and ebooks, just to name a few. This rate is very high for Americans, and we are shocked and appalled that you put up with it. We hate taxes. We started a whole war over taxes and wasted a lot of good tea. And even though we adore Europe's beautifully maintained cobblestone streets and parks and well-preserved monuments, we can't wait to get on a plane back to America with our VAT-exempt forms. 
I'm obviously joking. The Americans who protest taxes have never been to Europe. Otherwise, they'd realize just how wonderful socialism can be. Another joke. I'm in a triggering mood. Sales tax in America is very confusing. Every state in America has a different sales tax rate, and there's often local city taxes on top of that. States like Oregon have 0% sales tax, whereas states right next door, like California, have anywhere from 7 to 10% sales tax, depending on what city you're in. Talk about confusing. The best thing about the VAT in the Czech Republic is that it's already included in the listed price of what you're buying. So a dinner that costs 300 crowns will cost you just that, 300 crowns. In the United States, you're always kind of estimating the cost of something because tax is not listed in the price on the shelf or on the menu because we're trying to outsmart ourselves into paying taxes. Exact change, please. If you need 2,000 crowns out of the ATM or the Bankomat, that's about $80, you take out 1,800 crowns instead. And here's why. There's a war going on between the store vendors and the banks, and we consumers are on the losing side. The ATMs only give very large bills, and the stores only accept very small bills. So when you take that large bill to a pizza stand and try to buy a slice, you can't. No pizza for you. On the contrary, if you save up all of your one and two crown coins, you'd think the vendor would be so happy when you walked in with a fistful of the exact change. They will not be. Once I had a notary throw that fistful of change right back at me. On the ATM, you can request smaller bills, like a 200 crown, which is about $8, but sometimes the ATM will refuse to give you 200s. No 200s for you. But if you withdraw 1,800 crowns, the machine has no choice but to give you 1,000 crowns and four 200 crown bills. You're going to need a bigger purse. The most valuable coin in U.S. circulation is the dollar, but we don't see it very often. The highest coin that is usually used is the quarter, which is worth 25 cents or about six crowns. And it's just annoying to carry around a bunch of metal coins in your pocket. Some men just carry around bill folds and they don't even have a place to put their coins. So then you just put them in your pocket and then when you get home, you put them in a can and put the can in the closet. Then at the end of the month, you take those coins to the Coinstar. The Coinstar is a machine in supermarkets where you take that can of coins, pour it in, and it spits out all the paper clips and safety pins and lint and gives you $2 for your trouble. This, by the way, is a $2 bill, which is very rare, but it is the only US money that we happen to have in our house. In the Czech Republic, coins are quite valuable. This baby is worth 50 crowns, and it will buy you a half liter of Pilsen in Prague or a full liter of Bratnik. And it's the same value as this. So if you have a pocket full of those babies, you can drink all night. This is probably why European men carry purses, for the beer. When I first arrived eight years ago, banking was a huge challenge. There were expat branches for English speakers, but you had to be rich to get a bank account there. So I went to a regular bank and forced some poor banker to prove to his bosses that he spoke English and he helped me open my first bank account. These days, the online banking is super easy. There's an English language app that allows me to do all my transactions from my phone. I hear about all these apps in the States that are popular now so people can pay their friends like, like Venmo or the Cash app, things like that. But the Czechs have that ability already built into their system. In the Czech Republic, it's really common to transfer money between banks. All you need is the person's bank account number and you can send them the money from your phone. So we use it to pay our friends back if we owe them money or to pay for invoices. And most businesses or services will send a PDF invoice and it'll have a QR code on it. So you just take a picture of it with your phone and then you can pay the bill in just a few clicks. I'm not exactly sure how the American system has modernized since I left, but I do know that it's way more complicated to send money between friends in the American banking system because I tried it with my friends and it was a big hassle. In the Czech Republic, it's really easy. 
The US is very much a credit culture. When I went to university, the first week we were there, there were credit card companies with stands outside the bookstore. And they just gave you your first credit card with the $1,000 limit. I didn't even have a job. So of course, I spent it all immediately. And then I couldn't pay it back, and then the debt grew, and I got into some financial trouble. In my observations, checks don't use credit cards nearly as much. When we arrived, it was much more of a cash culture here, and cards were not accepted at a lot of places. But that's really shifted, and now even the Christmas stands will have card machines. And even contactless payment with your phone is widely accepted. One big difference is that debit cards here have chips, which you can use without contact. And if the purchase is over 500 crowns, then you would have to enter your PIN. Even though cards in the US have started to get chips, you still have to sign a receipt after the purchase. And the check cashier is often unfamiliar with requiring your signature and they forget or sometimes you have to remind them to do it. City's gonna city. I can guarantee that the one comment I'm gonna see in the comment section, if you haven't already written it, is that Prague is not Czech Republic. Oh honey, I know, Los Angeles is not the United States either. So if there's one thing that Prague and Los Angeles have in common, other than more traffic, it's that they're a lot more expensive than the rest of the country. I don't have experience living in Liberec or Ostrava or Kladno, so I can't give an honest opinion about other Czech towns. If you live outside of Prague and wanna have a good cheap beer with me, let me know in the comments and hopefully I can come explore your town. I would love that. So what do you think? Is the culture of money very different in your country? Have I gotten anything terribly wrong? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for new videos each week. Uvidime se příští týden. Ahoj!